Hello everyone, we're Simon New Secret here and welcome to another video. Now, the GTX 1080 will be available for sale tomorrow and uh, what you get with that card will basically you get the new Pascal uh, GPU with 16 nanometer technology, uh, 8 gigs of GDR5X RAM from Micron and a bunch of new features and improvements that NVIDIA implemented there. So in terms of uh, hardware, for example, we get the new die cast aluminum body with the new design of the shroud, uh, a low profile backplate that has a removable section for better airflow and SLI configurations. Uh, on the inside, we get the uh, vapor chamber cooling solution, uh, low impedance power delivery network, custom voltage regulators, and a five phase dual FET power supply. Now, all this combined together makes the card uh, more efficient more reliable and it promises great overclocking potential and that's what we'll be talking about today is how to overclock the GTX 1080 and what's the what's the new um, implementation or new features when it comes to overclocking this card so talking about that we have to talk about GPU boost 3.0 now previously we had uh, GPU boost 2.0 and they're gonna put a little a little graph here just to have a visual of what I'm talking about. So with GPU Boost 2.0 we had a fixed frequency offset in relation to the voltage that you were applying. So no matter what the voltage you were applying the frequency offset that you were getting was exactly the same and if you look here we have this curve that corresponds to what the card could possibly achieve and this is what we were doing with a fixed frequency offset. So in between these two lines basically we have this performance that was left on the table. That we, we weren't tapping into this. With GPU Boost 3.0 that will change and we will be getting very close to the theoretical max clock that the card could achieve. So NVIDIA implemented new you know, um, technology. It's, it's hardware based and software based I guess and with that each voltage point can have its own frequency offset to get as close as possible to that optimal performance point that the card could achieve. Now to get through to the whole uh, overclocking um, settings and to overclock the card per se we need to use some kind of software and right now the one I have access to is the EVGA1, so Precision X uh, 16, made for the GTX 1080 and 1070, I guess. So, so far, it's still um, in alpha stages, so I didn't get any newer version than this, and I'm flying tomorrow to Computex, so it's going to be this or nothing. Um, so far the UI changed a little bit, we find the same um, display, we have our monitoring uh, tools here and then the sliders to control the power target, temperature target, uh, GPU clock offset and memory clock offset. So this is the manual stuff that we're used to. However, if we click in here, we will get to this second kind of menu where we have three different uh, options for overclocking. So the basic, it's basically the same thing as GPU Boost 2.0. So if I click here, for example, it will create a static offset that's the same for all voltage points. Now, this is not really interesting for us because it's no different than what we, what we used to have before. Uh, linear, now this I'm not really sure about, uh, I don't even think it's it's working as it should be, but basically you can pick a starting offset, frequency offset, and then the software will calculate and it will create some kind of a linear um, curve that goes all the way to the highest voltage point. And if I click somewhere at the end of the voltage point spectrum, it will line it up again. So basically you gotta do some trials and errors here and you wanna take advantage of 
whatever um, the card can do but again I'm not sure about this one so we're gonna leave it alone and again the software is not the final version yet so just take it with a grain of salt however the one section that's really interesting here is the manual section where we will take advantage of GPU Boost 3.0's capabilities. Now basically here we can either go manual and assign a frequency offset to each voltage point as we want. So I can do one here and then one here, one here, one here. So basically you're assigning the offset to the voltage point. Now this, I just did it, you know, randomly, but usually you'd have to basically assign a voltage point, do some benchmarking, stress test it, test for stability, and let it run, you know, for a, for a certain period of time just to make sure that it's stable. And you see I'm still, you know, changing these as I go. Like you can do really whatever you want. Now, the other option available that will take all that guesswork out of the equation is the OC scanner. Now GPU Boost 3.0 accommodates for OC scanners. Now what an OC scanner will do is it will actually test for stability for each voltage point and assign the frequency offset that's basically the, the most optimal frequency offset for that voltage point for that specific card. So what you end up with is a custom basically um, offset curve for your own GPU. Now, how does it work? Uh, basically, you click run and it will do its thing, but we can still change a few things by clicking here on the little setting uh, icon, and you can pick the test you want to run. Uh, preset, right now there's nothing here, but maybe that will change. Uh, full screen, resolution, uh, AA, test period, you can put it to five seconds, 10 seconds, depends really what you want to do and how how far you want to go with this how granular you want it to be uh, how precise and then also we have the gpu clock offset um, for the start the end of the testing phase and then the step between each test um, with this here i guess if you if you diminish these values it will take longer but it will be less prone to crashing I uh, want to do it fast, you can push these a little bit up, but then you risk that the system will lock on you and you'll have to either reset or hope that the driver uh, will recover. So I'm going to leave it, uh, these values seem to work for me, just to, for the purpose of this video. So let's see how it works. Now if we just do this, reset everything, so once I hit run, We'll get this animation, it's the uh, EVGA kind of logo, and it will be testing for five seconds, looking for artifacts or any instability, and then it will move on to the next uh, voltage point. Now, let me put that position back just to show you. So, it's doing its thing. Now, this little point that it assigned here it might move, there you go, it moved up a little bit, so it figured that it can push it a little bit harder and it's still stable, so it just did. And it will keep going until it hits a certain point where it's not stable anymore, uh, it doesn't really do the trick, so it will backtrack to the previous stable point and then it will move on to the next voltage uh, point. So I'm going to let it do it for another little moment. Hopefully we'll get the second voltage point assigned. You can see what's going on. And I left everything else at basically uh, default settings. There you go. The second voltage point has been assigned. So it will keep testing and it will keep pushing it up until it finds its optimal offset and then it will move on to the next one. So I'm going to cancel it because we um, are not going to take a risk that it will crash on me. I redid this video like 15 million times and as I told you guys I'm traveling tomorrow so I don't really have too much time to play with this anymore. There you go. So you get the gist of it. That's what it's going to do and technically it should populate this whole section here and you will get a 
basically a custom curve for your own GPU. I'm going to cancel this. There you go. So that was just populated randomly, I guess. It didn't really finish. So it will just assign a, a fixed uh, offset across the board. Let me just default this. And then we get back to our uh, manual screen. So what are you going to do? I'm going to really quickly try to push this card a little bit, see what it can do, and do some benchmarks. So basically here, I would push the power target all the way up and the temperature target to set priority to temperature because I'll be pushing the fan all the way up to 100% and you will be you'll be hearing it in a second uh, for my specific card I figured that 245 megahertz offset on the GPU and 550 I could get 600 but I'm just leaving it at 550 I found that 600 didn't really change much in terms of uh, performance I, I wasn't even getting one frame extra so didn't really make any difference so set that up and yeah I think we're good to go so we'll apply that and I don't know if how sensitive the microphone will be to the uh, noise of the fan that that's something else is if you want more performance, you want to push the card uh, hard, you're going to have to pay the price somehow. Hopefully, with the newer uh, custom cards from NVIDIA's partners, we will get some cool uh, dual or triple fan cooling solutions that can run you know, at lower uh, temperatures with way less noise. That would be fantastic. But with this card here, the, the type of the cooling solution available it's a little bit noisy it's not as noisy as previous iterations like the I don't know even even the 900 or 700 series the um, stock or uh, reference cards they were way noisier than this so the, in comparison this you know it's it's acceptable even if at 100% I wouldn't really run it myself at this at like 100% fan speed all the time but just for testing it didn't really bother me much but for gaming I would love to see Nvidia maybe change the fan uh, curve a little bit to you know maybe mitigate a little bit the noise here but well for now because we're pushing it we're gonna leave it at a hundred percent there you go so that's that uh, I'm gonna put this over here and let's run a quick Haven benchmark just to show what the card can do. So it's 1080p. Uh, I'm gonna run it in uh, windowed mode just so we can see everything at the same time. And I'm gonna move it out of the way when it's starting. So I'm gonna just let it go for for a few, for a couple minutes maybe, just so you can see how, like the max it will peak at, and then it will lower up a little bit and then stabilize at around a, s a certain a certain clock. There you go. I'm gonna start the benchmark. So so far, we're sitting at well, 2,075 megahertz on the on the GPU and 5,556 megahertz on the memory. I see it's it's fluctuating, but it's still over 2,000 megahertz. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, on a longer gaming session, uh, that might change a little bit as the GPU gets hotter, the power draw and all that. So it might dip to the 1,900 a little bit, but still that's 200, over 200 megahertz. Uh, than the actual boost speeds of uh, 1730 ish that NVIDIA uh, assigned to this card so still that's that's crazy I've never seen cards run this high clocks with so little work basically and it's stable I, I tested it I did a bunch of benchmarks uh, at these 
specific numbers that I'm running right now and it's it's been fantastic so let me just stop this here and show you the results of my benchmarks compared to the card performance out of the box I'm gonna put this back to auto apply and I'm going to leave it at those numbers there so taking a look at the um, performance benchmarks so Haven benchmark we're just running it earlier uh, at uh, 1440p we get 72 frames per second compared to 64 frames per second uh, stock speeds and on 4k resolution the card right out of the box managed 26 frames per second with with the overclock I just assigned to it it got me 29.5 so that's that's something and heaven is pretty pretty heavy and three almost four frames extra it's it's good uh, when you look at fire strike well the uh, regular fire strike we got almost a thousand points extra same thing on fire strike extreme and about 600 points in fire strike ultra uh, doom I tried doom so at 1440p the stock speeds I was hovering around 104 frames per second with the overclock we got 121 and in 4k from 51 stock speeds we got 64 with overclock so that's fantastic 4k running at 64 and this is basically with everything pushed to the limit like it was ultra settings I just had um, anti-aliasing uh, MSAA activated there and it's running at 64 4k without really you know uh, breaking a sweat Far Cry Primal uh, 1440 we got 78 frames per second uh, stock speeds and then 88 under overclock and in 4k from 42 we jumped to 47 for Rise of the Tomb Raider 1440p from 58 Point 0.9 we jumped to 66 and in 4k from 48.7 we got to 54 which is still not bad the witcher the, the witcher and 1440p again um, stock speeds 57.4 frames per second and with the overclock we got as high as 67.5 and then in 4k from 36.5 we got up to 42 so it's better not really optimal but again all my testing I really I really pushed all those uh, <laughs> all those sliders to the to the right like uh, anything I could max out I maxed out and what else what else what else uh, yeah so that's basically it um, tomorrow the card will be available and if you're like me you know you spend a few hundred dollars on a card like this you want to overclock the living daylight out of it so you guys let me know what you think and uh, if you put your hands on one card tomorrow just leave a comment and tell me how far did you get it to to run and what's the temperatures like okay thank you very much and see you next time